Welcome back to Orchard Forex. I have another short video for you today. This is answering a question about how to write an indicator that would change the chart background color based on something the indicator is doing. So to do this, I'm going to use the example MACD indicator that's supplied with MetaTrader, and I'm going to make a copy of that and then set it so that it changes the chart background if the MACD is positive or negative. I've got MetaTrader 4 here to start with. I'll be writing the code initially on MetaTrader 4 because it's almost identical to MetaTrader 5, and then I'll just show the very tiny difference by copying that across to MetaTrader 5 and making an update there. Now, in the navigator for MetaTrader 4, there are a number of sample indicators provided. Here one is the MACD indicator. I've created a folder underneath my Orchard folder called MACD Color Change, and I'm just going to copy this into that MACD Color Change because it's not a good idea to be modifying the actual sample that's provided with MetaTrader just in case there's a new release that comes out. So I've made a copy of the MACD here. And the first thing I'm going to do is write a single function that will handle setting the background color of the chart. So I've gone down to the bottom of the code. I'm going to create a function here called set chart background and that will receive a color as the argument. Now I don't want to set the background if the new color is the same as the existing color, so I'm storing a variable here which is current background and I'm just setting that to minus one initially. It's a static variable, so that means it will be initialized just the first time this is run to this value, and after that it will have the same value that it had the last time this function exited. Minus one is not a valid color, so I know that the first time this comes through, the new color is going to be different to the old background. So if the new background, this argument supplied, is the same as the current background, or whatever was in the current background the last time this function exited, then I'm simply going to return. That just saves running unnecessary processes. And then there is a single function that I can use to set that background color. So the function is this chart set integer because color is an integer and the arguments to that are the chart number and zero is the current chart. So I'm obviously updating the current chart where this MACD indicator is running. The next argument is what value I'm setting and I'm setting the color background and I'm setting that to the new background color passed in here. Chart set integer will return a boolean. That's why I have an if statement here. So I'm saying if that is successful, then I set this current background, so I can remember the current color, to the new background. If this fails, then I'll simply go through to the return statement. I don't know why it would fail, but it means that current background will not have been updated. So the next time this is called, it will still attempt to process. And that's the entire function for actually setting the background. Now, how do we call that? Well, when I do decide what the condition is for calling it first, and I've chosen the MACD indicator I'm just going to set two different colors depending if the MACD is positive or negative. And I know there's a possibility that the MACD will equal zero, so I'm considering zero to be positive. Now here inside the main body of the indicator, let me just add a blank line there to separate this. There is this loop for i equals zero while i is less than limit i plus plus. So this is counting from bar number zero up to whatever the limit is and setting the MACD value. This is where I want to put the call to set this chart background. Now this for statement, you'll notice there's no 
brace here. So this is not a block statement. It's just got a single statement there and I need to do more things. So first thing I'm going to do just So I've converted that to a block statement just by adding the bracket here and there. And now I can put more statements in. Now I only want to make this call if I'm processing bar number zero, that's the current bar of the MACD. Uh, if I called this every time I went through this loop, if I've got 10,000 bars on the chart, then it's going to call 10,000 times. I don't want to do that. I only want to set the color based on the current bar because there's just no point setting it for every bar. It can only have one color. So if bar number is zero, if I equals zero, I'm setting up this background color and depending on whether the ext macd buffer i, which should be zero, is greater than or equal to zero, then I'm going to set the color to green, and if not, I'll set the color to fire brick. So this is a ternary operator, and it's the same as saying if ext macd buffer i is greater than or equal to zero, background equals green, else background equals color fire brick. And then I just need to call this set chart background and pass in that background. So if the color doesn't change, it will obviously be calling this, let's say the MACD is continuing to be positive, it will keep calling this set background with the same color green, but this statement will mean that it simply exits and doesn't waste any processing time. Bar number zero, if it's just crossing that zero line, can easily fluctuate as the price goes up and down while a bar is open, you can see it go above and below zero many times if you watch closely enough. So this may cause a certain amount of flickering. You can't really avoid that easily. There are two things you can do. First, you could set this to I equals one, and that means you're actually tracking the color based on the currently closed bar. So bar number one is the one just before the bar that's open. Alternatively, you can set this once and set a flag to say that it has been set for this bar. But then if you've changed the color because the MACD has gone above zero and it goes back below and continues to go down, what are you going to do about that? So there's no real good answer for that. I'm just going to leave it as is for the time being. And that's everything I need to do in this MACD indicator. So briefly summarizing, I've written a function that will actually set the background color and we'll remember what the old background color was so that it doesn't waste time and processing power if there's nothing to change. I've modified this for loop so that it actually has a block statement. So depending on your indicator, you may, or not, may not need to do that. And if the bar being processed is the current bar, i equals zero, I'm going to choose a background color based on some condition from this indicator. Now the MACD really only has positive or negative. I might've chosen to set something depending on whether it is above or below the signal line, but I didn't do that here. So whatever your condition is, choose a background color and then just call that function. And that's everything. I will compile that, make sure I didn't have an error there. No, I will now show you exactly the small change for MetaTrader 5. So to begin with in MetaTrader 5, the MACD indicator has moved. It's inside this examples folder. And there it is, macd.mq5. So I'm going to begin by copying that into the macd color change folder. I'll add the function. And this function is exactly the same. So I'm just copying that in from MetaTrader 4. Set chart background, color, new background. No changes here at all. Here is the loop in MetaTrader 5 where I want to insert the call to that set background. So let me just add some space around that. Just as with MetaTrader 4, this indicator has a single line loop. So I need to put that into a block.
Just as with MetaTrader 4, I'm going to set a background color with exactly the same condition. And I'm also going to put a condition around that because I only want to process for the first bar. But this is where the one very small difference comes. In MetaTrader 5, instead of the current bar being bar number 0, the current bar is actually rates total minus 1. It's just the order that it's processing because the arrays are in a reverse order in MetaTrader 5. Or reverse order compared to MetaTrader 4. So all that really means is that instead of having if i equals 0, I have to have if i equals rates total minus 1. Other than that, the code is the same for MetaTrader 5 as it is for MetaTrader 4. Let me compile. And that also compiled. Uh, now let's just go back to MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. We'll run both of these in the strategy tester so that you can see that it's actually doing something. So I've got this set up using the MACD color change version of MACD. Let me start. And here at the beginning, the MACD is below zero. So I've got the fire brick background. Let me speed this up so you can see it changing. And now you can see as it goes from positive to negative, the color changes. No need to watch that for too long. Now I'm set up in MetaTrader 5, still with the MACD color change. And here you can see the same thing happening in MetaTrader 5. MACD is below zero, moves above zero, back below, above, and so on. And so that's all you need for a very simple function that will set the background color based on some kind of indicator that you're using. Remember, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified when we release new videos. Thank you for watching.